broccoli is probably the most expensive crop on anybody's market list it is besides expensive super healthy for you amazing for your brain amazing for your blood amazing for your entire body so let's talk about how to grow your own organic broccoli right at home in a container super simple easy and affordable let's get to it hello everyone i'm so glad you can make it this is Dylan from the training gardener channel and i'm not going to keep you all very long today because today's topic is on growing broccoli which is very closely related to some of the videos that i did in the past few weeks on growing cauliflower and growing cabbage so let's get straight to it now the first thing that you'll need is a container more and more i am growing in these concrete buckets it's just the perfect size in my opinion and they are also very very durable and also very cheap so i mean they take all the boxes you can get them from the people that sell um, those things um, like breeze and um, toilet paper and chairs and whatnot on the highway um, on the main roads just very very easily accessible for everyone now of course at the bottom of your container you're going to want to put some drainage holes so minimum of five half inch drainage holes you can use a drill if you have one or if you don't you can just use a hot knife or like a hot piece of iron to just go into the um, plastic of the bucket and it will be more than enough just make sure that when water goes into your container it has somewhere that it can run out because stagnant water is going to cause your roots it's not going to do any favors to your plant and it will cause the roots to rot okay so let's head on over to the potting up station and we'll talk a little bit more about what to do with your broccoli seedlings okay so ready to plant in my broccoli seedling a dollar for these normally in a nursery you can get them cheaper you can get them for two dollars no more than that right if you have seen my cauliflower grain guide then this is going to be very similar to what i talked about on there so inside of my container i have a mixture of mainly um, of two types of compost i have my um, wood compost and also i have some animal manure which is cow manure um, it has been cured for over six months right minimum four to five months of cow manure right inside of my hole for my ceiling i have already put some of this right you can see it inside there but probably can't see the difference so this is worm castings which if you, you have been following the channel for any time you know i love to use worm castings which is basically worm manure right and besides that i also put this organic fertilizer it is very very optional you do not need to buy this to have successful broccoli but i do use it not just um for the npk right which is of course from my um fertilizer guide you know what the npk stands for right so this is nitrogen phosphorus and then the six is for potassium and it has other things as well you have your sulfur your magnesium your calcium but i use it mainly for these things here this is beneficial bacteria that is a, a, a sort of a, a proprietary blend that this company has and uh, what these um, bacteria will do is that they will help the root system to develop and allow the plant to be able to take up more nutrients to be able to go longer without moisture so it's just really good to have these things there especially as an organic farmer or an organic gardener not quite a farmer um, it's just really important to have things in the soil that's designed to help the plant to function because we're not like the chemical world where we're forcing chemicals on our plants we're creating an environment and creating a soil base whereby the plant can do what nature wants it to do and these are things that will naturally occur in nature itself it's just that this comes in a pack where scientists have developed it so that we can just easily have some bacteria beneficial bacteria here but also if you don't have this it's not the end of the world at all this is very very optional because if you already have your cow manure you have your green waste compost your wood compost there's already going to be beneficial bacteria and fungi in this mix here it's just that this is just an added layer to this make sure but very very optional okay so i'm just gonna put my seedling inside here i'm doing this with one hand so bear with me i like to bury my um broccoli same as i said with the cauliflower just a little bit deeper and just mold it up along the stem so that the stem doesn't fall over because sometimes you know you don't want to bury it too deep um, but it can make the stem fall over especially when you water if there's high wind and these are babies right so you want to be careful with these seedlings and the next most important thing now this soil is already pre-moistened but if you didn't pre-moisten your soil make sure you get your watering can i don't think there's any more water in here there's a bit there right but give it a good drink of water i don't need to do it because i already watered this um, soil mix here but make sure when you transplant your plants that you do give it a good drink of water because transplants these seedlings they're just babies right so you want to be very very careful to make sure that they have everything that they need right at their fingertips as soon as they um, 
they get transplanted they have a nice drink of water that will just allow them to be happier in the soil mix that you have put them in there otherwise you could have something called transplant shock which is where the leaves can get droopy they can fall off the leaves can become this discolored sometimes the plant bounces back sometimes it doesn't bounce back so the best thing is just to avoid transplant shock by making sure water your seedling as soon as you transplant it now when it comes to sunlight i treat my broccoli just like i treat my cauliflower which is i do not give them any more than six to seven hours of sunlight normally if you have the ability to like you live in a temperate country and you have like spring weather you have fall weather then give them the full sunlight that's what they would like and that's what they need but in Trinidad, that excessive amount of sunlight comes with very hot scorching heat which will cause your leaves to droop it will cause the water in the soil to dry out really really fast it's nothing compared to giving it full sun in a temperate country when it is not in summertime. With your broccoli, just like with your cabbage, just like with your cauliflower, bolting is a real possibility. Remember, bolting is a process whereby plants like brassicas go to seed. The seed is not in the plant like this. They have to go through a process that will cause the plant to then grow upwards towards the sun, produce a flower, and the flower contains the seed. We do not want that to happen if your intention is to eat a nice broccoli head. So our main job is to make sure that the broccoli is nice and comfortable. Once your broccoli is comfortable, it's never going to bolt on you. The broccoli bolts when it feels like it can't live anymore in comfort where it is. So that's why we want to make sure that we don't give it too much sunlight. It does need sunlight, of course, but too much sunlight in Trinidad means extra hot temperatures, which will cause your broccoli stress. That will cause your broccoli to bolt. And when it bolts, it's not a pretty sight, even a bolted broccoli, not like um, lettuce, which sort of is kind of cool when it bolts. Broccoli looks very, very disturbing when it bolts you don't want to have that happen for any reason at all and that will take us into the next point which is regarding watering you want to make sure and of course i showed you with the mix that we're putting into these containers you know a lot of compost a lot of organic matter so that's going to hold on to the moisture so that's good already but at the same time you do need to especially as we are growing containers you need to make sure and always be checking on the water i personally water these plants every day mostly in the morning time right i will check it in the afternoon to see if it needs like a top up but i find it's a better practice to water your plants in the morning time that way it has the entire day for the leaves or whatnot to dry out and any pockets of um, moisture that's just hanging around that will be able to you know just evaporate and not create a nice environment for slugs and caterpillars to want to come in all right the drier you keep your leaves the healthier you're going to have your broccoli plants so make sure every single day one good thorough watering deep watering make sure that you see the water sander come out through the bottom so that you know that the water is going all the way through and then you are going to be sure that your broccoli is not going to have any problems not going to have any complaints about lack of water and with the water will also help keep the roots nice and cool so that the plant even if the leaves had to get a bit stressed from the heat in trinidad that the root itself will tell the plant okay we can survive for some more and that's going to avoid having bolting happen okay because once the process of bolting happens it's almost irreversible i don't think it's possible to reverse that um that process and you don't want it to happen because all of your work is just going to the plan is just going to decide i can't survive it's going to bolt and then all of your hard work is basically down the drain because the plant is no longer going to produce a nice good taste and head for you now when it comes to fertilizing your broccoli i don't use anything apart from what i've already talked to you about the only thing I would do is I would do a top dressing of some animal manure. Um, right now, of course, I've told you I use um, mainly cow manure. It's just what I have. It's not better than anything else. It's just what I happen to have at the point in time. It's well cured. And I would just add that to the top layer of the soil there. Just let it, um, not even like um, incorporate it so much. Just add it to the very top and just water it in. And that nutrient will help create a good environment where the plant is never going to feel like it's lacking nutrients. Because, I mean, to produce a broccoli head takes a lot, a lot of work. That's why we do need sunlight. That's why we need proper watering. But it also needs to have the nutrition to have broccoli. All right? And I don't target any one specific nutrient because I don't think that us, you know, unless you're, I don't know, some kind of superhero, I don't think we can tell exactly what a plant needs at any point in time. We can assume based on what we, you know, we, we say, you know, you put nitrogen in the beginning, you put um, some phosphorus all the way through and you put potassium towards the end to help with that head that's fine but i think that is better to just give the plant an overall um nutrition and overall um fertilizer such as your compost whether that be your green waste compost your animal manure um that will just give the plant basically everything that it needs it's not just one nutrient it's all the nutrients that you have in there as well as the um, right micrology to have those microorganisms that are there doing the work so that's that beneficial bacteria and fungi that i talked to you all about 
when I was doing the potting up. And that's pretty much it for fertilizer. I don't overthink it when it comes to fertilizer. In an organic garden, we rely a lot more on the microorganisms to grow our plants than we do on the actual nutrients because we may not know exactly what a plant needs, but the plant knows and the plant will actually communicate. There are studies that show this, that the plant will communicate with the microorganisms in the soil through sugars that they release through their roots that will allow the microorganisms to know, okay, this is what I need to mine for the plant and this is what the plant wants. So encouraging that symbiotic relationship between your plant and the soil life that's in your container is a very, very important aspect of growing in an organic garden. And that's it for growing broccoli 100% organic in your container garden. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. But more importantly, I hope that you learned something from this video. I really hope it's going to push you and encourage you to try growing broccoli because it's a plant just like any other plant with its things to know and its things to do, things not to do. And you should definitely give it a go. It's one of those plants that sometimes people think, you know, it's kind of daunting. And, you know, it sometimes is a patience game. You see so many nice big leaves and you start to, you know, check it every single day, a few hours a day. You know, you, every um, few minutes you come back and you want to see, is there a head yet? Is there a head yet? It's a patience game with broccoli. It can be between 90 to 100 to 110 days to start to see that head and for that head to mature so you know be patient with it but just have fun with it and really enjoy the fact that you are taking your own food security into your own hands and you are being more self-sustainable so if you know someone who would also be interested in being more self-sustainable and growing more food for themselves and their family nice delicious organic food for themselves and their family then share this video and also the channel with them and help them along the pathway as we all learn more about gardening and producing our own food remember that you can follow us on instagram facebook and on tiktok and you can also tag us on your videos and pictures on any of those platforms we're really happy to see what you're getting up to in your garden and remember as always this has been dylan from the training gardener channel reminding you to get up and get green take care